Okay, so now's a good point to go and have a look in the weight paint menu so that you can see what is actually going on here. So if we jump over here to the weight paint menu, you'll see all these bright colors. And in a nutshell, these colors represent the weight that these things have on them. So let's just talk about head for a minute. We know that we started by selecting head and we assigned head to the head vertex group. That's what all these points are. They were assigned to head vertex group. And because of that, they are red. Now we didn't assign the ears, we didn't assign the eyebrows, the muscle, or any of the pupils. So they're all blue, because blue is zero. So red equals one, it means it's been assigned. Blue equals zero, it means it's not been assigned. Any colors in between, and it's literally the colors of the rainbow, it's basically a half and half, and it's a mixture, a blend of the uh, green and red. So we'll see examples of that when we flick through. So muzzle, I bound the muzzle to it 100%, so it's red and everything else is blue. L pupil, I've got the L pupil all as red, but look at this, I've also got this ear. So I can already see that that needs to be removed. Now, it would be very handy to have a selection menu here so that I can just drag a box over these and then come over here and click remove, but unfortunately that's not there. So we have to go over to edit to do this. Grab these, L, and then remove. Back over then to weights, and you can see they've all been removed now. Same with this side, that ear has been added. Another way to get rid of this is to use the brush and manually get rid of it. So if I turn my weight onto one like that, I can press F to make this bigger. I can press Shift F to make sure there's no drop off on it. And I can just click and drag over the top of it like that until it's entirely blue. Ear is fine. Ear L001 has got a hold of the pupil, so I'm going to just clear that off. IL looks good, although IL appears to have a hold of pupil as well. So I'm going to just shrink this down like that and just get that off. Trying not to uh, accidentally catch the eye. There we go. Stripes have the stripes, but they also have the muzzle. So I'm just going to make this a bigger brush and just clear the muzzle off there. Head is good, muzzle's good, eyes good, that's good, that's good. We didn't put that one on yet. And what I think I'll do is add a few more groups now whilst in weight paint mode and just add those. So ear.r is one that I need for this side. Now I've got that selected. I'm going to turn the weight all the way up like that. And I'm going to make these red. Now, of course, I'm going to wind up catching loads of different bits like this as I'm going through this, which can be very frustrating. So what you want to do is lock the layers on the grease pencil of anything that you don't want active. So you've got your layers tab just here and you can come back to this option here and say auto lock the inactive layers and then you can click through and find the ones that you want. So I'm dealing with, this is why labeling is so important. I'm currently dealing with the ears and the ear masks. So I can see ear L and ear R. So let's just go with ear R, which is that one there. And with that selected, all the others are locked. So now when I paint this on, it's not accidentally hitting all the other bits. It's only hitting the ear. Now ear R mask is there. So I'll just do the same with that. There we go. Spot on. So I'll just close that and come back to the vertex groups and all the others look like they are fine to me. I will add um, ear.r.001 so that we have that for later. ear.r.001. There we go. Notice when I added that, it immediately assigned the eyebrows to it. That's because the eyebrows don't have a home and Blender is trying to be helpful by auto assigning different bits of this to different groups. Now it, it will do that. It'll it'll see that these are supposed to be attached to this armature because it's got an armature modifier on it and as more groups are added it will auto assign the vertex points to those groups and that's something that I'd prefer didn't happen but I don't know how to turn that off as of this video so instead I'm gonna have to come over here and turn it off myself I'm gonna go to the layers and that is a brow so I just need to find brow if you're struggling at all you can always click on this little down menu here I mean brow is right there in front of me but had I typed in brows it would have just popped up like that 
Let's turn that weight down to zero and get that turned off. In other areas in Blender, hold and control will do the opposite of whatever value you have up here. So if this is on one and you hold control, it will be zero. Again, Grease Pencil's weight paint tool doesn't have anything like that yet. So I have to turn it down manually like that. It's blue, and I'll just turn it back up again like that. Wonderful, I'll just get rid of that. And we'll go through now the vertex groups with the arrow keys, just to see if everything is as it should be. Looks good to me. Of course, the ultimate test is to go into object mode, select your armature, go into pose mode, and start moving things around. So I'm currently rotating around the um, 3D cursor. Always remember to flick that back to bounding box so that you're rotating around the area you're supposed to be. So the stripes are completely still. We'll have to make sure that this stripe controller is bound. So I'm going to shift click the head, control P, keep the offset, and then back to pose mode. Let's give that another try. Okay, the stripes are following now. I clearly haven't done the eye on the screen left, character right, and then the brows as well are without anything. I should have really added a joint for those, so I'm going to do that now. It's quite normal when you're rigging to forget to do things, so don't worry if you're constantly going back and forth, back and forth. Right, everything seems to be in order. I can't stress enough that it's a good idea to just check over the whole thing in pose mode, just to see what's where and how things are working. So the head is obviously very good. If I give the stripes a click, you can see they're moving around nicely on the head. My new brows, ah, look at that, one's in the wrong place and the other's probably the same. Yep, so I need to switch those two around. Let's have a look at these ears. Yep, lovely. The eyes, good. The pupils, good. And then we know the muscle is under there. Great. Right, let me sort out these brows. Pop over here. Just need to check the names actually, make sure that the mistake is the brow and not the name of the brow. So that's R and that must mean that this one is L, yes. So it is that I've paint weighted them in the wrong place. Over to weight paint. Let's find brow R. So brow R is, uh, yes, yeah, so I've done screen R instead of character R. So I'll just turn the weight down and rub that one off. Now you notice it's not coming off at the moment. That's because down here in the grease pencil layer we have got it locked so let's just click on it so it becomes active and then we'll be able to paint that off right while we're here with brows unlocked like that let me um, add the correct one so this is r which is actually over here so this is r here character r screen left so i'll add that one on there and then we'll go to this one here which still has that one added on so i'll just move that down turn that to blue Turn this back onto one. Brow L, which is this side, screen right. Turn that one to red. Wonderful. Now we'll have a look at this. Brow is working and brow is working. Fantastic. Okay. A little word about the eyes and how they are working. So you've seen how they're attached, but how can they keep on going behind the eyes? Now that is because of a mask that I set up when I created this. And the mask basically says, I'll show you now, pull this up a bit more so we can see. I'm not going to give a tutorial on how masks work. So we'll just find the pupils, which are there, and just right click and select all points so we can see them. Yep. So these pupils have masks ticked, as you can see there. And basically I've added to their mask menu the eyes, and I've inverted it. So when it's that way around, they will not show up until they are out of the eyes. But when I have this inverted, they will only show up when they're in the eyes and they will disappear when they are out like that. So that is how that is working. So let's talk about these ears and how they're going to work. Now, the first thing I'll do is animate the ear moving slightly. So I can go down here to my dope sheet and I'll use the dope sheet as the timeline, but I could press Shift F12 and just head back to here if I wanted a cleaner view where it's just the classic timeline, but I'm happy to work in the dope sheet. Now I'll come to frame 20 and just close uh, this. You can probably see that my eyes are shutting there. That is something we'll come to at a later point. 
that's basically the I time offset modifier that we're going to make use of soon. So I'm going to just take this ear and I'm going to curl it that way slightly like that so that I can get an idea of how that looks and I'm going to put a key on it and I'll come down to the dope sheet menu so that I can see animation keys on a rig. When you're in grease pencil you're only going to see grease pencil keyframes you're not going to see anything else but if you go to dope sheet then you can see both you'll be able to see any of the keys that you have on a selected grease pencil object and you'll also be able to see any of the um, I'll just show you there so if you have them both selected like that you can see in the dope sheet the armatures animation here and you can see the grease pencil animations underneath so I'll key it there and then on frame 10 I'll just bend the ear that way and I'll put a keyframe there so now it's moving like that and that's handy because now I can start to carefully brush the vertex points onto this ear and see the deformation as it happens let's come out into object mode select this and go into the weight paint mode I'm looking for the ear.l001 which is there and nothing is colored in at all that's a good start that's how I left it so I'm not going to use this brush to paint this red as you can see nothing's happening that's because this layer is locked so back to the grease pencil and down here we'll just find the ear drag this up a bit so I can see better there's always the search here if you want it this is ear L so that should do the job yep there we go so I can just lay some paint straight on it and as you can see between red and blue just like oil and water that spectrum is starting to show and when I twist the ear around like this you can sort of get an idea of what the um, what these points of deformation are like what these bends are like that's when you put it on with a solid block which is just another way of saying my drop off is on one so if I press shift and F I can gently take this brush strength and you see the, the strength menu in the top left corner just changing there I'll take that all the way down to a 30 like that and it just means that when I add paint on it adds it very gradually like that which makes it much easier to get nice bends like that however I will start from scratch I will not just work from the um, point where this is was blocked in and I'll also just take it to a place like this and make this brush pretty big like that that way when I click can you see that there's a tiny amount of weight being put on it it's just a case of clicking on it more and more adjusting the size and almost sculpting this in and because it's such a fine amount I can do it like that and just check out the deformation as I go along and get an idea of what's working and what's not. I think I'll turn it up a little bit more just so that I'm not here all day. You want to pay attention to these creasing points here so you can get an idea of how that looks. And weight painting is just a slow artistic game of watching as things change. That's as far as I can go with ear.r.001. But remember that ear.r has full control over this at the same time. So I can click on ear.l, not r, sorry, ear.l, and I can turn this down to zero and start to turn these points off. So as well as adding weight to ear.l.001, I can also gently brush them away from R like that. And that smooth gradient from one to the other is where we'll get the best results. And it's just a case of by eye just looking at it like that. There we go. So that, that looks pretty good to me. Now again, just to sound like a broken record, it would be wonderful if I could copy this ear weights over to that ear now and all would be good it's something blender have got sorted out for 3d animation where you can just copy from one to the other it's not a thing for grease pencil at the point of recording this video but it's something i really hope that uh, they bring in soon now that i've done that i'm going to do my best to copy the weights of the mask over the top 
and again I'll need to do that manually so let's go to weight paint and I'm going to find those ear masks in this menu I can see R is there I'm after L and same again I'll just look at the way that that's bent in that direction first I'll select this one lower this down and to be honest it would have been wiser to have done these together instead of doing them separately like I have done but I guess uh, I guess I'll do that for the other side when I get to it so that seems to be as far as that is willing to go let's just bend it the other way now yeah and you pretty much want to make it the same kind of color as the vertex points that are underneath it like here I'll now switch up to L and you can see it's all blue so I'll turn this down to zero there we go you just gently try to mimic the colors you see how it's got a green there green there light blue light blue that's what you're trying to do you're just trying to get them pretty close because that means they'll then move relatively close like that you see how these are all green and yellow but then I've got red there could always go in there and just try to try to use the edge of the brush to catch those bits like that and yeah looking good thankfully with a character like this there isn't very much paint waiting to do because it's all pieces and it is a good idea to work in grease pencil like that to create your pieces with rigging in mind so that you're doing you're minimizing the amount of weight painting that you have to do I hope this won't be the case in the future when all these weight tools catch up right so as it stands this is a rig that can be animated you don't need to actually go in and add any more bells and whistles than you already have it's looking good and it's all fine you can see a little bit of a rubbish waiting there where you'd have to go in and sort that out but ultimately it's actually looking pretty good and it's ready to go however you might want to make your rig a bit easier to work with by changing these bones into curves so that they integrate a lot more closely with the rig but you can quite happily just animate like this and there's no problem with that it's just a case of ergonomics it's a case of the UI being a bit difficult to work with if things such as the muzzle control are buried underneath here and you just can't quite get to it so that's what we'll talk about in the next part of this tutorial is how to take these bones and turn them into shapes that fit the rig more seamlessly.